Nej. Well, shit. Hello, people of YouTube, and welcome to the Spikehead Podcast for another movie review. Today, we shall be talking about How to Train Your Dragon Free, The Hidden World, directed by Dean DeBlois and starring Jay Baruchel, America Ferreira, and Gerard Butler. This is the third of the Train Your Dragon trilogy. In this one, Hiccup and his crew are saving dragons from the ships of warlords, but they enlist the help of a bad guy called Stoic, who is famed for killing Night Furies, which is Toothless's breed of dragon. So they have to leave their homeland to go find this place called the Hidden World, which is apparently a utopia where dragons live in peace, separated from the rest of the world. And Hicka wants to lead his people and Toothless there, so they can get away from the outside world who all want to kill dragons. This was an animated film I was really excited to see because I love the first two Hall of Train Dragon films, particularly the second one. So I was very hyped going into this one, and I'm happy to say I was very satisfied with it. Let's get straight into some positives here. For starters, the relationship and friendship between Hiccup and Toothless is as strong as ever. Their bond is just so damn cute. Toothless is a bit more dog-like in this one, I'm not going to lie. But I do enjoy the chemistry between the two and the journey they go through throughout this film. It's fantastic. I particularly love that Hiccup is trying to wingman Toothless from the background with the light fury. And it is leads to some of the most hilarious scenes in the movie across the entire trilogy, to be quite honest. As well, I also really enjoy the relationship between Astrid and Hiccup. There is this big subplot where they're trying to get them married, and I really love them too. They feel like a, such a natural couple, and there is so many jokes that are made about what a relationship is like, but the way they support each other through thick and thin, and how Astrid can read Hiccup through his low points and his high points is really well done, and I absolutely love those two together. The fact that Hiccup has this great bond with Toothless, and the great romance of Astrid, he's got a lot going for him, this character. Speaking of relationships, Toothless and the Light Fury, their relationship is adorable. They are both so damn cute, like really freaking cute. And the scene that you see in the trailer where Toothless is trying to do all these fancy little dances, these mating dances as they were for the Light Fury. They are hilarious as hell and I'm waiting for the memes where people say this is how I flirt because it is so campy, so hammy, but so much fun and so adorable. And Toothless, when he draws a little picture, that is adorable as hell. I absolutely love the scenes with those two together. It's all told through visuals and sounds and facial expressions and that is animated really well. Which leads to another point of mine, the animation has been coming a long way for DreamWorks over the course of these three films. Just the wind blowing through characters' hair and the sense of gravity and space around the people and just the dynamic between the characters and their objects and the scales of the different sized dragons. It is really well done, this animation, and I really love what DreamWorks has done with this trilogy in terms of the animation and the storytelling. It is a really clever trilogy, I must say myself. But obviously we can't have a good film without a good villain. His motive is literally, he was a hero for killing a knight very once, so he always wants to relive that and he enjoys the hunt. And his layback nature and trying to get what he wants is really good as well. Most villains you will see trying to take him on straight away, but this guy, he is happy to take his time, he is happy to play with his food and fish him out and cause him to make mistakes. He is a very good predator in this one, and I just love how cold-hearted he is as well. There's a scene where he does kill a dragon, and it is literally both badass and cold. It is really cold. And he's just a really sinister villain. I love myself a sinister villain, especially in animated films, and I feel like he is right up there with one of my favorite animated villains in the last 10 years or so. Now, obviously, we do have also the fact that this is the end of a trilogy. And does it have a satisfying conclusion? Hell, yes, it does. Now, I knew where it was going. It is a little bit predictable, but one of the big positives for this film is that for everything that's predictable and cliche, the film works around it and it is really impactful in where it goes. I saw where the journey was ending and I was getting teary towards the end. I was getting a lump in my throat. It is a really emotional and heartfelt impact throughout this and it segues very nicely into the credits. The credit sequence is a montage of all three films back to back, showing the journey. It's like a full package all tying up at the end. It is so good with how this film manages to pay off three films worth of material. 
See, with trilogies, usually the third one falls flat, but this one makes sure to embrace the previous two and to finish its storytelling. At times, it does sacrifice a few things for the sake of forcing this good ending, but I really enjoyed this film to no end. But I'm not going to say this film is perfect. There are a few negatives, I will say. For one, the cliches. Like I said, there are cliches. You will see them coming, and the film tries to work way around these by speeding through them, basically. These cliches you'd usually last about five to ten minutes of the film's runtime, but they slice it down to two minutes. One particular example is the low point where all hope seems lost. That is started and ended within two minutes of screen time. The conflict with the protagonist, that is over within two minutes of screen time as well. It fast forwards very quick and it does get a bit jumpy in terms of the pacing and editing of the film. I wish I could have dragged these out a bit more. Well, yes, it is cliche, and we know that it's going to turn around eventually anyway. It's still nice to see these play out, and the fact they fast-forward through these scenes does affect the pacing quite a bit at times. And I will say this as well, that the climatic battle is the weakest, I will say. It's over quite quickly. There's no big stakes here, at least in the first two. These had high-stakes climaxes, but this third one... There's never really a time where it feels like they're going to fail at all throughout this. That, again, does have its predictable elements and has a few plot holes along the way as well. I don't know, I just feel like I wanted more from the actual climatic battle. While the ending of the film itself was great, the climatic battle that leads up to it is a bit short and a bit of a down point of the film, I will say, because there's very little here. I'll also say that the side crew as well are very one note in this. Hiccup's mom is not nearly as badass as she was in How to Train Your Dragon 2. Rough Nut is next level stupid in this, like ridiculously stupid. I'm not going to say how, but she is dumb. She is really, 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 really thick. I don't know why she has to be written this thick for the sake of story progression. Fish Legs is literally babysitter, that is his one quirk of the film. Tough Nut is just basically trying to be a bro to hiccup and it's not really going very well at all. Snotlout's one character trait is he's trying to bang Hiccup's mum. Apart from Astrid, all the side characters are just put into these little boxes and it does get quite irritating at times considering these were integral characters in the previous two films. There is also some very ham-fisted dialogue, like the way they established the marriage storyline and the trying to get the bad guys to go after the good guys. I don't know, some of the dialogue is a bit jarring and a bit ham-fisted at times and it does suffer the film a little bit in my eyes as well. I will say this as well, there are some plot holes in this. I will mention one thing at the start. It's not really much of a spoiler. Basically, the Light Fury is captured at the start and she shows up and it's implied that the villain released her to set up what follows the film. It never plays a part later on in the film. It's like a story plot that was set up and it never really goes anywhere and the Light Fury kind of becomes just like a side piece character to the film, which is... A little bit disappointed, I'm not going to lie. It just feels like if you weren't going to use the dragon, then why did the villain just let him go? It is very questionable why the villain does this. And there are a few times where the villain can kill them all. And he doesn't. Like, I get it's a kid's film, but there are so many times where the villain is a little bit questionable in how he does things. He likes to play with his food, sure. That's one of the things I really love about him. But there's a time and a place where you want to mess with him and when you actually just want to get your work done. That is one thing that really bugs me about this film. Apart from some plot holes and some forced hammy dialogue, this film is really quite good. So negative wise, I'm really am clutching at straws. Though I will say that the pacing of this film is off a number of times, especially when it rushes through some of the cliches to try and avoid him. Performance wise, Jay Barrichell is really good as Hiccup voice wise because he has to sell the emotional moments and he has to sell the funny moments and he does a fantastic job of it. He's done a fantastic job in all three of these films and I really love the emotional depth that he brings to Hiccup because Hiccup goes through quite the character journey and I love how he manages to portray his emotions change over time. America is really good as well. She is a great of a half to Hiccup's character and having to sell the emotional speech bit towards Hiccup during the down bit of the film is a really good scene and I love the humour that she has as well just the charming cheeky humour that she does have feels very genuine to a genuine relationship and she carries that side of things really well indeed. Kirsten Wig, who plays Rough Nut 
delivers one of the funniest scenes in the entire trilogy, and she is having a hell of a lot of fun with that scene. She doesn't get to do much as a character in this film. There's this one scene where she is brilliant, and she had me cracking up in the cinema, which is very hard to do unless it's like slapstick. This was just all dialogue, all witty, fast-paced, annoying dialogue, and I love that part of the film. Overall, this film has cliches, and it does have pacing issues, but this enters the books as a good trilogy, in my personal opinion. It has such a good emotional payoff at the end. Even though we saw exactly where this film was going, I feel like this film did its job in taking cliches and working its way round them and telling the story in a fresh way. And it is really a gut punch and it's such a sweet, bitter ending. I don't know, just a trilogy, you want it to have a nice bookend. And while the film itself has its good bits and its poor bits, it has more good than bad and the emotional ending just really makes it for me. I'm one of those people where the ending has the count and they make this ending count and I really enjoyed this. I will say thank you How the Train Your Dragon Free because it's been a slow start to the year and I've not seen any film that's been any more than average or okay. So thank you very much because I am proud to say guys that How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World is a good cup of tea. It's sad to see it all end, but I'm glad to see that it did end in a satisfying way. And I can't wait to read a Blu-ray of this. Guys, have you seen How the Train Your Dragon The Hidden World? If you have, kindly let's discuss down in the comments below what we thought of the film. And if you do like what I do on this channel, hit that round subscribe button for more reviews coming all the time and see my other content over here. And everybody, in terms of my next review after this one, it will probably be Escape Room or Green Book. I'm not decided yet, but I look forward to bringing those to you. This is that Spikehead Podcast signing off.